So the next bit we're going to do are proofs, which are on divisibility. And these are awesome because it's just so different. How else you could prove this thing? I'm not really sure. So it says, prove by induction that 3 to the power of 2n plus 11 is divisible by 4 for all positive integers n. Like, why on earth that's divisible by 4? There doesn't look like any kind of algebraic property there that we could factorize out of 4 or anything like that. It just, it's just really strange that it's going to be divisible by 4. And we're going to show that it is divisible by 4. Now, um, if you wanted to, we could substitute in some values. We are going to have to substitute in n equals 1. But we're just going to put a couple more in, not for the sake of the example, but just to explore what's going on. You wouldn't actually need to do this. So the first thing we're going to do for that base case is we're going to show that it's true for n equals 1. So we just don't have a left-hand side or a right-hand side here. We're just going to have 3 to the power of 2 times 1 plus 11 is equal to 20, is equal to 20 which is divisible by 4. Sometimes people like to say this. They like to write it as 5 times 4 just to make it like crystal clear that it's divisible by 4. Okay? You don't have to do that if it's an obvious number like, like 20. Yeah, let's do that. I, I actually, I prefer that. I think if we wrote 4 brackets 5, it's then it's really, the it's showing that 4 is a factor. Okay, now this bit, I don't want you to write this bit down, but let's just quickly see what happens. If you did it with n equals 2, you would have 3 to the power of 4 plus 11. 3 to the power of 4 is, so it's 81 plus 11, which is 92, which is 4 multiplied by 23. Yeah. yeah. It's divisible by 4. Um, it is divisible by 4. So we've got 4 times 23. And I'm not, you don't need to write this down, but if we did it with um, n is 3, we would have 3 to the power of 6 plus 11. That's a calculator one. 3 to the power of 6 plus 11, that's 740, which is 185 multiplied by 4. So it's just kind of weird that they're all multiples of 4, right? And we want to be able to show that this is true for all values of n. So like I say, we don't need to write this bit down that we've got here. But what we're going to do now, this is going to be a bit weirder, is we are going to assume that it is true for n equals k. In other words, we are going to say that 3 to the power of 2k plus 11 is divisible by 4. Okay? We're not going to say it's a multiple of 4. We're not going to do 4 brackets something. We're just going to assume that it is divisible by 4. Perhaps what I should have done earlier on is I should have said, let f of n equal 3 to the power of 2n plus 11, because I'm going to use some f notation, OK? I should have stated that at the beginning of the question. So I guess I could have said here, i.e., f of k is divisible by 4, just using that kind of notation that we've got there. So we're going to now try and show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. We're going to try and show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. Now, there are two different methods of doing this. One of the methods is just to dive straight in with f of k plus 1. The other method is this tip that I've got down here, which we're going to use, and I always prefer to use this one. But you may see um, in mark schemes or other teachers may do it in a slightly different way. I always like doing this thing here, and you'll see how it works. So for now, you're just going to trust me about how we use this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use f of k plus 1 minus f of k. We're going to do some manipulation to that thing, and you'll see why I've done this. So for now, you just need to watch what I'm doing, and it will all make sense in just a second. So f of k plus 1 is going to be 3 to the power of, what would it be for the power when it's k plus 1? Good, 2k plus 2 plus 11. And then we're going to be subtracting from this f of k. Well, f of k is 3 to the power of 2k plus 11. So this is equal to 3 to the power of 2k plus 2 minus 3 to the power of 2k. And I'm always going to want to, I want to aim to have the same power powers set up as f of k. 
So what I mean by that is f of k has got to the power of um, 2k. So I don't want to have 2k plus 2. I want to make it a, have a, two, a 2k rather than a 2k plus 2. So what can I do with this plus 2 here? Kind of factorize it. I, I'm going to split this as a 3 to the power of 2k multiplied by a 3 to the power of 2 because you can add the, index, uh, add the indices like this. And then I'm subtracting 3 to the power of 2k. So what I did was I split the power or split the index, but I split the power. And I did that because I was trying to have the same powers as f of k. Let's keep going. This is the bit sometimes people find really weird, OK? I've got nine lots of 3 to the power of 2k, and I'm taking away one lot of 3 to the power of 2k. So I have eight. so I have eight lots of 3 to the power of 2k. I'm going to do that a little bit more slowly then. So if you wanted to see this, you could factorize out 3 to the power of 2k, which would be 3 squared minus 1, which is 8 lots of 3 to the power of 2k. So this is what f of k plus 1 minus f of k is equal to. And I'm trying to find out what f of k plus 1 is equal to. So f of k plus 1 is equal to 8 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2k plus f of k. And I'm wanting to show that f of k plus 1 is divisible by 4. Is this divisible by 4? Is this divisible by 4? Because we assumed this was divisible by 4. Now, sometimes people find this a bit weird, but if, you, if you've got two separate things that are divisible by 4, if you add them together, obviously it's still going to be divisible by 4. Because it's like adding two things from the 4 times table, you're going to still be in the 4 times table. So I'm just going to rewrite this bit as 4 multiplied by 2 times 3 to the power of 2k plus f of k. Just to make it crystal clear. And I could say under this bit, this is clearly divisible by 4 divisible by 4. And this is, we assumed it is divisible by 4. Hence, f of k plus 1 is divisible by 4. So just before we write the conclusion statement, this tip of subtracting f of k often makes the algebra that we have on this section that we've got here, it often makes that bit a lot easier to do. So it doesn't, it's nothing magic that's happening here. It just having the subtraction of the f of k tends to make the algebra become a bit more streamlined. There are, you wouldn't technically have to do it with that, but it does just, I find, makes it a little bit neater. And then at the end, you can just add that f of k back on and we know that f of k is already divisible by 4. So as long as the other chunk is divisible by 4, the whole thing is divisible by 4. So what we need to say is, um, since it is true for n equals 1 and true for n equals k plus 1 when assumed true for n equals k, It is true for, what did it want it to be for? For all positive integers n. OK, we're going to squeeze in one more example before the bell goes. So if we go just a couple of minutes into break time, I'm sorry. true for all positive integers, and the ones I'm referring to are n. Oh, okay. So you're right, I should probably really put a comma in there. I'm going to start the next one, and if you don't finish it, you can always write it up afterwards, But because I'll, I'll, I'll put the PDF for you guys. 
So we're going to prove by induction that n cubed minus 7n plus 9 is divisible by 3 for all positive integers n. Well, clearly here I can't factorize out a 3, so I'm going to have to do this proof by induction. So I'm going to show that it's true. Oh, hang on. Before I even do that, I didn't do this last time. What was the thing I was going to write down? Let f of n equal n cubed minus 7n plus 9. So I'm going to show that it's true for n equals 1. In other words, f of 1 is 1 cubed minus 7 plus 9, which is 3. Um, so f of 1 is divisible by 3. So it is true for n equals 1. And so we're going to assume that it's true for n equals k. In other words, that f of k, which is equal to k cubed minus 7k plus 9, is divisible, divisible by 3. That's the assumption. We're just writing that it is divisible. It's a bit different to um, the summation one because we were using the, the proof itself. We were saying this thing is equal to this thing this time. We're just assuming that it is divisible by 3. And now we're going to show that it's true for f of k plus 1. In other words, I probably should have written, show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. And we're going to do f of k plus 1 minus f of k. Nothing going on here other than it just makes the algebra a bit easier. So f of k plus 1 is going to be k plus 1 cubed minus 7 lots of k plus 1 plus 9. And I'm going to subtract f of k, which is going to be k cubed minus 7k plus 9. We'll do binomial expansion on this, but it's a nice easy one. It is k, k cubed plus plus one, and then we've got minus 7k, minus 7, plus 9, minus k cubed, plus 7k, minus 9. I see the minus 9's cancelling. And let's just tidy up everything else that we've got. Oh, something else is cancelling. The 7k's are going, the k cubed's are going, and then we're just going to tidy up what we've got left, which is... minus 6, so we can then factorize out a 3, and this is what f of k plus 1 minus f of k is equal to. So f of k plus 1 is equal to 3 lots of k squared plus k minus 2 plus f of k. So this is clearly divisible by 3. Also divisible by 3. Hence, f of k plus 1 is divisible by 3. Last sentence. Since it is true for n equals 1, true for n equals k plus 1 when assumed true for n equals k it is true for all positive integers n and that's it there's a second type of these divisibility proofs I've called this divisibility proof 2a because 2b is like the same thing, but there's just like an additional step that makes them a little bit trickier. So I'm going to pick out some questions from exercise 8b for you to do on this one, and then we'll come back next lesson and we'll do the second type of divisibility proof from the G matrix proofs as well.